Folks, I am selling my Kubota. I talked about it, that I might do it, and I'm making a decision and I'm sticking to it. So if I take it off the market, it's because I didn't want to sell it, but we're putting it on the market for now because I bought a brand new tractor, a bigger one, a Kubota M5 111, not the black one with the tracks. Bought a brand new one. I'll probably do a side-by-side -side video, maybe if I get around to it, of the M4 versus the M5. Biggest tractor I've ever personally owned. Small for a lot of you big time farmers out there still, I understand. But as big as I could go and still use um, the attachments that I sell, right? I like to mix it up. I've had this tractor two years. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not selling it because I don't like it. I'm just selling it because I like to try new things and show you guys new things and mix it up and try new equipment and, you know, just to have fun. So anyway, this is a one of a kind in my opinion. All right, we've done all sorts of things to make this unique, unlike anything else on the market today. There's about 170 hours on it. What is this, a 2021? 2020, we'll look it up, 2020, 2021. I've had it since October, November, 2021. I had about, I think about 50 hours, if I remember right when I bought it. So I only put about 120 hours on it. I've got a lot of equipment, so it's kind of nice to not put a, a ton of hours on one machine, but it's, it's done great for me. I put all these food plots in and uh, did a lot of the driveway installation with it and, you know, tilling, I did mowing. Um, we did some stuff out at our Richland property when we first had it too out there, subsoiling. It's a big old beast of a machine. Now this one has uh, the transmission where you can push the button on the gear select. It's like clutchless. So you just push a button instead of having to push a clutch in and then you can switch gears on the fly. So that's really nice. That was an option on my M5, but I didn't go with that uh, because again, I found a really good deal on one and it just didn't have that, that feature. So that's how it goes. Um, these tires are loaded, all right? Liquid ballast in the tires. Of course, a full HVAC cab on here too. These are the R1 AGs. Uh, a couple steps to get up either side. Does have doors on both sides so you can enter and exit. I didn't often enter on this side. You can see there, I'm a pretty slim guy. Still hard to fit through there though. As you'll notice, I still have the plastic on the seat, okay? Try to take care of my things. Keep that dust and dirt off that seat. Could have put a, I don't know if they make a seat cover, but that, that plastic was in good shape. Somebody said they'd never trust a guy who left plastic on a seat. So if that's you, I guess you can't trust me. But LA 1154 loader on here. Great bucket. Upgraded this uh, bucket with this nice JU Fabworks bucket bracket right in the middle. All right, if you want to get one of these for yourself, Save 5% with code GWT at JU Fabworks. Now right behind there, see these hoses down here, this whole black section is a hydraulic quick coupler. All right, and so it's just kind of like the fancier skid steers. You can take this bucket off and put a set of pallet forks on without ever leaving the operator seat or same thing with a snow pusher, for example. Cats me out, all right? So nothing else like that on the market. Give them a little angle over here. So we've got two sets of extra hydraulic hoses coming up front because not only do we have the hydraulic hoses going for this hydraulic quick coupler, but we've also got a third function mounted here too. So you can run a grapple on here if you got like a hydraulic angling snow blade or if you want to run a, a loader mounted post hole auger, this has enough hydraulic flow where you could do that on there too. And so that gives you a lot of capability. This is a, a, a super capable loader. This is a step above the Grand L6060, all right? So you can't get hydrostatic in this size of a machine. They just don't make them. No brand makes them in hydrostatic once you get to this size and get a lot more torque, just a lot more power to the ground. They run cooler. If you're gonna be doing like brush hogging in the summertime, for example, you, you'll notice there's a significantly lower and more consistent and even engine temperature. You don't have to worry about overheating nearly as much. Um, installed the, uh, the 511 grill guard on here and the side guards too, again, another discount club partner where you can save five percent with code gwt and they got these grill guards all sorts of accessories on their website for all kinds of tractors on there too you will notice it's a little tweaked a little bent okay that's nothing to do with the tractor itself it's to do with uh, this bracket that's down here so we got this tractor stuck in a video uh, we showed you last summer or this past summer, whatever it was, and it was stuck pretty darn good. And so 
there really wasn't a great spot to, to chain it around. And so we chained right around the base of that bracket and pulling it out, yanking it out. It tweaked that, that frame of the, uh, the grill guard there just a little bit, but that's no big deal. Uh, let's take a look at the backside, Chris. Show you what we have going on here. All right, so this is a, a category one slash two three point hitch. And we have as proof that category one will work on here, a cat one three point quick hitch on here. I'll probably sell this quick hitch and the hitch hangers along with it. Um, so the hitch hangers, you can hang suitcase weights on. All right, so you can put three 41 or 70 pound suitcase weights on either side. I would suggest 70 pound weights on here if you're gonna go that route. Um, and so you can get a bunch of extra weight for three point weight. Again, we have uh, liquid ballast in the tires, but this loader can lift. Well, that 1154 number on the loader is kilograms. So turn that into pounds and you're at like, what, 23, 2400 pounds, 2500 pounds, something like that to full height. And even more if you're just trying to get something off the ground. So maybe over 3000 pounds, just getting it off the ground, it'll lift a lot of weight. So you wanna have good counterweight on the backside to offset that. We do have a hydraulic top link on here. I got this hydraulic top link on Amazon. But now, Summit Hydraulics sells hydraulic top and tilt links, okay? So gonna be a lot higher quality. This got the job done, it's just, it kind of, it basically came in looking like this. <laughs> so kind of all, you know, shoddy-ish. But hydraulic top links are amazing and I would highly recommend getting one, um, one way or the other, but save 5% with code GWT at Summit Hydraulics and also get this hydraulic multiplier, all right? You can get that third function up front too. But this is amazing, all right? So from the factory, this had two hydraulic circuits that you can see down here. One, two hoses are one circuit, so one and two circuits right there. I wanted more hydraulic functions to operate other things. And so that's what you see plugged in here. You know, let's just say you had a hydraulic top and a tilt kit, right? That's two hydraulic functions. That would take up both of these if that's all you had and you couldn't use anything else hydraulically on the back of your tractor. But instead we stole one of these circuits and, and fed it into this whole multiplier. So we turned one circuit into six circuits. All right, we have uh, a couple of them going up front feeding our hydraulic quick coupler, okay? And then we still have the ability, if we want to, to add on a hydraulic side link. And then let's say I got a hydraulic snowblower with a hydraulic chute rotation, or not a hydraulic snowblower, a snowblower with a hydraulic chute rotation, a hydraulic deflector, a hydraulic back drag. Well, we need another circuit, another circuit, another circuit. Then there's just one left. So you can see how these can add up quickly depending on what you're you're going to be doing with it. Anything else back here, Chris? The, the feature you never use. Oh, this feature? Yeah. So the M5 does not have this on there, and uh, Chris was pointing that out the other day when we were looking at the tractor, and I said, yeah, but I never use this feature on on this tractor or really any tractor. So it does have the ability to you can turn this knob and raise and lower the three point with the tractors on. Um, I don't know. It has it. I don't, I don't think it's all that useful myself. It does have the telescoping draft links. That can be useful, especially if you don't have a quick hitch. Um, well, maybe this would be more useful if you, if you didn't have a quick hitch on there. But I mean, I've, I've backed right up to so many attachments and just picked them right up from the operator seat that, you know, if you have a quick hitch, you don't really need that function. So uh, get set up the right way out of the gate and, and you're good to go. I'm six foot three rounding up. For scale so this is a pretty good sized tractor pretty substantial um i have to check the specs on tractor data i think it's yeah it's too tall i think it's a nine foot door that you need eight foot it's not going to fit underneath i think you need a nine foot door to fit this tractor under but um it's been a good tractor we got we've done a lot of video a lot of projects with it been a good machine what do you think about this tractor chris i don't, I don't like there's a reason to get rid of it yeah he doesn't think i should sell it but, you know, so one of the reasons, kind of kind of stupid, but one of the reasons I went with this tractor over the John Deere 5 Series was the buddy seat. I had no buddies right along with me, though. Nobody. No buddies. But this had a buddy seat in my uh, M5. I got one in there just in case I ever get a buddy. I don't know. I'm still looking. June. June, yeah, I could strap her in here and maybe take June along with me. She'd want to get out and chase down every creature she saw, though. But, uh... Plenty of room in the operator station. Got the little sunroof, which they kind of market it as visibility for the loader if you had it raised to full height that you can still see uh, up, up through the top of the roof instead of having to go like this, I guess. I don't know. I like to say it's just so fancy. It's, it's got a sunroof on it though, kind of like a sports car or something. But 
Radio, I don't think I've ever even turned that on. My M5, I didn't even get a radio in it. No, I got a radio in my Coyote. I bought a brand new Coyote tractor too, a smaller one. We'll show you guys that as well, but it has a dome light, controls. Um, I, I think I'm neutral. I don't love or hate the position of all the HVAC stuff kind of all around the console compared to all the other tractors that have the vents all up top. Um, I don't know. I, I, I could take it or leave it either way. I, I guess if I was probably building my own tractor, I would probably put them up here instead of down around here. But I don't, I don't hate this either. It just... And it's just the location that it's in. But you can see Chris. Chris was thinking that the M5 had a had a different design, but it's quite similar to this one here with the uh, little power reverser deal there. Love the tilt steering, just that lever. I mean, it's super nice, you know, convenient to get in and out like that. But everything is it's great. A lot of storage in here. I mean, I'm always using my storage. You got a cup holder back here, more storage there, more storage there. I sometimes will tuck things down there if I need to. But I've even put stuff, there's enough room behind my feet on the floor to even kind of store something down there a lot of the time as long as it's a stationary thing and not going to roll around. Um, this has been a good machine overall. I Have we had any problems with this machine? It was not the machine. It was when we were hooking up the pull behind. Yeah, so I don't think we've had any problems with the machine that I can think of uh, at all. It's been a, it's been a problem-free machine. Um, you know, it's low hour. It's still going to have some warranty left on it, powertrain warranty, not not a whole lot. Uh, the mirrors are really great. I have hit the mirrors on tree limbs more times than I can count. They'll just kind of fold away, but they're not broken, you know, they're, so they're a durable, tough, tough mirror. I would recommend this tractor if you're in the market looking for something. Um, now, Coyote makes a similar one, the RX series, and of course, you know, other brands, TYM, LS, everybody else makes them too, but when you start looking at what the value that you're getting for your money on some of these other brands besides Deere, it, I sell, I'll sell, I do sell John Deere tractors because they're a great tractor, but they are a premium. You know, you're paying for the name and the color of the tractor just for being a John Deere because a lot of these other tractors out there will do more for less money. Right, and so there is something about just looking at a green tractor in a field, and then I can get the nostalgia of it and everything else. And um, I don't want to dissuade you from getting one of those, but I would, I would consider Kubota. I would consider Coyote. I would consider some of these other brands too, if you got the, um, you know, the market in your area to to support it for service and and parts and that kind of thing, or if you can wrench it yourself too, that's that's good. So controls in here as far as your what we're looking at you got a couple of them to control the rear remotes from the factory that's what these are parking brake this controls your high and your low this is our loader joystick with our our third function on there here's our gear select okay and that little gray button that my thumb's on when you're going on the fly you can just press that in and then change to whatever gear you need to be in uh throttle okay so you have a, a hand throttle to control the engine rpms up and down as well as your foot throttle down here oftentimes i'll just put the the hand throttle kind of right in the middle and so that gives it kind of a bottom you know your low end is going to be right in the middle and then if i need to rev up i just use the foot control to do that uh little button there just for two and four wheel drive oh i know what that's what we had to take it in for there was that whining or that chattering noise that was fixed with the service bulletin and it had something to do with four wheel drive that's been fixed we took it in a long time ago and had that fixed on there uh, that's all that was I don't honestly remember what this is. I, I never use this plus minus thing. I don't remember. It could be for engine RPMs. It could be for recalling settings. I honestly don't, I don't remember, but I never found it useful enough to figure out what it was. I don't need a super crazy amount of controls on my tractor to, to make it uh, work right. Uh, three point raising and lowering your draft control for your, uh, your three point as well. Here's your RPM or your your rear PTO engage and disengage some light controls things like that um, Gosh beyond that that's really about it. I think Split brakes clutch That's your clutch. Here's your split brake. I always kept those tied together. I didn't have a need to to turn sharply with a, a split right or left 
But yeah, overall, been a great machine. We'll have it for sale on the website here soon. We'll take some pictures of it um, and, and, and get it listed up there. It'll be free shipping to 36 states like any of the other tractors that we have for sale. But this is really, this is set up with just about everything you could possibly want. You know, between all the options with the, um, the bucket bracket on there, the grill guards, the third function, the hydraulic quick coupler, the multiplier on the back, plus the two factory remotes, the, the quick hitch and the hitch hangers, liquid ballast in the tires, factory cab, air conditioning, heat. It's, it's loaded up about, what was it, about 73 horsepower, give or take right around there. We'll put the specs uh, from, the, from the website in the listing too. We ran seven foot tillers, eight foot box blades, eight foot lamb planes, eight foot rakes, um, eight foot snow pusher on the front, eight foot disc. You know, you're running big, you're running substantial attachments. You can get a lot of work done quick. You know, we have 40 acres out here and this was a kind of the go-to tractor. So, you know, we'll be able to get work done maybe a little bit quicker with the bigger one, um, but more or less just to show show a lot of these same tools on just a little bit bigger tractor that it'll still get to work on on those two. Now, if this tractor's too big for you, we do have other tractors, most of them smaller, for sale as well. So see everything we have to sell at goodworkstractors.com. Whether you're looking for a tractor or an attachment or want to put together a package, we can certainly help you out and we ship nationwide. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.